So at this point, I've got my setup. I've put my camera, and in this case, I'm using my iPhone, uh, mobile phone camera. I've set it up on a tripod in the position that I want it. I've set up my backdrop with the clip lights on it, like I showed you. I've set up my lighting uh, the way that it needs to be. And I've even checked, I've done a couple of test videos to make sure that the lights are hitting me in the right way, in the right places and I you know, look good overall. I've also checked the frame on the camera to make sure that I don't have any of the lighting equipment or other things that shouldn't be in the shot in the shot accidentally. And in this case, I don't. I have a very clear frame, uh, which looks good with my stick figure happy face on a sheet of paper, and I'll get to that in a moment. Now, as I said, I'm using my cell phone to capture this and it just so happens that my phone not only has a camera but shoots video in 1080p so it's going to give me a good quality video now i'm using right now i have open the uh, the free camera app that comes with the phone and while this does record video and you can adjust the focus by simply tapping on the screen the point where you want to focus the other thing that you'll notice is a little sunshine, and that is the exposure. And I can pull that, I can adjust that either up or down, depending on how bright I want it to go. Having said all of this, I really don't recommend using the free app that comes with the phone because it's still limiting in terms of the controls that you have. There's an app that I enjoy using called Filmic Pro, and I'll open that now. Another thing I'll point out real quick is if you do plan on using your mobile phone, it's a good idea to put it in airplane mode just because you don't want someone to call you while you're filming and ruin your shoot. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you can't receive calls if you're going to be using your phone as a camera. Now I've opened up the Filmic Pro app and what this gives me is a little bit more control over things like the exposure, the white balance, and even locking in your focus. So as you'll see on the screen, I have a couple of different icons here. The one that's a square is actually for focusing. So I'm gonna position that wherever my subject's face is. And in this case, well, I've drawn a happy face on a piece of paper and taped it to my light stand, but you could use anything. Ideally, you would want to have a person standing in, either a spouse or a friend or someone with you, but in most cases for doing these kind of videos, you're probably going to be doing all of this yourself. In this case, I am. And so it's easier to have something there to focus on rather than nothing. So all I've done is drawn a happy face on a sheet of paper, taped it to an extra light stand I had, but you could also use a, a floor lamp in your house. You could use a coat rack if you had one. Um, anything around the house that you could position the point is, is that you put it in the exact spot that you're going to be standing. You want to make sure you get the correct focus for where you're going to be. And in this case, I put it in the exact spot I'm going to be standing in. I can position the square directly over the face, and I'm, I'm going to lock it in. So that way it won't shift in and out of focus. The focus is locked on that spot. It probably goes without saying, but I'll mention it anyway, that you should never use autofocus regardless of what camera you're using. The autofocus feature is going to constantly shift focus with every movement that the subject makes. Having a shot that's constantly going in and out of focus or shifting around is going to make for a very distracting and, well, non-professional looking video. So make sure that whatever camera you're using you lock the focus in. The next icon I have is this circle that looks like it's been sliced. That's an icon for exposure. And depending where on the frame I drag it will adjust the brightness of the shot. Now, I wanna be careful with using this because if I put it, you'll notice that if I, if I put it over a dark part of the frame, well, it's going to brighten that up because it's what I'm essentially telling it is that area that's dark needs to be brighter. So by putting it over a dark part of the frame, it's actually going to brighten it a little too much, as you can see. I want to put it in an area of the frame that is going to give me the best balance. And in this case, having it down there where there's a little bit of light 
is going to give me the best balance. Again, I want to lock it in so that it's not going to adjust the exposure constantly while I'm in the frame. So I've locked that in. The final thing to adjust is your white balance. And this is probably the most overlooked step in setting up your shot. For any camera, you should be able to adjust the white balance. And this is so important because depending on the lighting that you're using or the source that you have for light, you could potentially get a weird color out of your skin or any other clothing that you're wearing if you don't properly adjust the white balance. Adjusting the white balance essentially involves putting a piece of white paper in the frame in the exact spot where the lighting would hit you. If you do it too far out of the lighting area, then you won't get a proper white balance. So in this case, I have the white paper with the smiley face on it, and I'm going to keep that there to do the white balance. And all I'm going to do is touch the final button at the bottom, which is for white balance, and I press that, and now the white balance is locked in. Again, you really want to lock all of these things in before you start shooting because you don't want the color temperature or the white balance or the exposure or the focus to be adjusting while you're trying to talk. At this point, I have a pretty good looking shot, but I want to make sure that it looks good with me in it before I actually record 10, 15, 30 minutes worth of material. So to do this, I'm going to simply press the record button. So I start recording. And I'm going to step into my shot. I'll move my little stick figure happy face. And now I can speak, and I'll make sure that I'm in the position I need to be in. And now I can speak to the camera. And hopefully I'll have the right shot. And in this case, <clears throat> I can come back around and stop recording now. And because of this app, I can go into the playlist here and it'll show me what I just shot. So let's take a look and see how it turned out. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now I'm a little off center, and that's something that, um, well, I would definitely want to do over and probably place my mark in a little bit more so that I am in the center of the frame. If I'm going for that, of course, I could also um, use the rule of thirds and put myself in one of the thirds of the frame as well. So let's try it again. Now, I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to have to reset everything, so I'll put my stick figure drawing back in, in the spot where, <clears throat> where I would stand. And I see now that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll lock in the, the focus. The exposure looks good. I'll lock in the exposure. And the paper looks white, so I'll lock in the white balance. And now we'll try recording again. Now I'll make sure that I stand in this exact spot. And now I can see that I'm speaking directly in front of the camera. I'm not too far off to one side or the other. So I have a pretty good frame and I should be good to go, but let's check it one more time. I'll stop recording, go into the playback menu. There's my new video. And there it is. And I'm in the frame. My head isn't cut off. Um, the lighting looks good. 
and I'm in the middle of the frame. So now I know that my mark is in the right place and I'm ready to shoot my full video. Some of the other useful features of this app is that it allows me to adjust different frame rates and frame sizes. So by going into the settings of the app, I can adjust different frames per second from 24, 25, or 30. I always use 24. I can also change the resolution if I want a 1280 by 720, or in this case, I've chosen 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. But if I wanted to record more video or didn't have enough space to record in 1080, I could record in 720 by simply selecting that option. I could even do standard definition if I didn't need it to be HD. There's also framing guides I can choose from if I want to know my frame to make sure that I don't go out of frame on anything. If I want to set up an external microphone and plug it into the headphone jack in the camera, you can use an external mic and there's a whole bunch of audio settings that allow you to adjust for having an external microphone. You can even view the audio levels on the app itself. So that's one way of utilizing your mobile device to record your video. If having to set the exposure or the focus on a camera seems too technical or daunting of a task for you, don't freak out. There are other options. One of them being using a point-and-shoot style camera, much like this one, which are a lot of times used by video bloggers because they're quick and easy to use. While you don't have the customized capabilities of setting the exposure, the white balance, the focus like you do on the mobile device, well, it at least offers you the flexibility in being able to carry this easily with you, set it up quickly, and basically all you have to do is put it on a tripod, press record, and you're good to go.